Hello there, Brandon Fertig here. This is Minneapolitan TV. Thanks for viewing. Today I have on another city council candidate. He's my first repeat guest here on the show. Uh, back last fall, I had him on when he was running for the State House of Representatives. Now he's running for Ward 4 in Minneapolis. Welcome to the show, Grant Cermak. Brandon, thank you for having me. Hi, you're very welcome. All right. So, Minneapolis, 4th Ward. That's up in uh, northeast? North, Minneapolis. North Minneapolis. Yep, the west half, western side. Almost the exact same zone that was uh, Senate District 58 that I ran in for state representative. So you're uh, uh, canvassing a lot of the same houses and uh, you know, it, that it sort of deal? It feels like old territory. I mean, I, I, I know it well. It's like, oh, this is my neighborhood again. So. I suppose people recognize you, too. A lot of them do. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's, that's got to be good. Um, and so, you know, going from a state uh, position to, or a, a state position's candidacy to a city level candidacy, now you're focused more in on the city. How does that feel different? Do you like it more? Do you, is, it, is it a lot different focusing on, on municipal stuff than on state stuff? Yeah, well, one of the interesting things, uh, getting a perspective from 2008 to 2009 between the two different races, is that I found out during the 2008 state representative campaign that a lot of the issues that I really cared deeply about were actually city issues. They weren't mm -hmm. things that a state representative could do a lot about. And it's a lot of the things that when I went door knocking and mm -hmm. talked to people, I found out that those are the issues that uh, your average resident cares more about. I think one mm -hmm. of the things you can kind of start to identify is that the most you can change is the localist thing. Yeah. Your neighborhood, your city, the more local you get, the more you can actually affect change. Yeah. The bigger you get, the more high up, the harder it is to change anything. Especially with like, you know, the brick and mortar, you know, and, and, and everything physical, right? And you know, like we have this federal stuff going on about, you know, insurance, and that might be um, pivotal. But when it comes to, you know, the physical stuff, the lawns, the roads, the schools and the businesses, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like trying to change the trajectory on a bullet. You better, you know, if you want to change the trajectory, you better do it early on in the local yeah. level than later on when it's, you know, beyond yeah. your control. Yeah, so that's, that's once, once it has a lot of velocity, it's out there, way to the side. So if you can adjust that trajectory at the local scale, I think you can affect a lot of change. So that's what I actually found. So the transition from uh, city to from state representative, it's been very natural. Ah, okay. So it sort of followed your heart in a way. The issues that you were most concerned about were ones that are better suited for. It was, it was a discovery process, if you will, because mm -hmm. I, f I found out that what I wanted to do was really change the city. It wasn't, although I want to change the state, I mean, I think we all want to change mm -hmm. everything because, you know, all of us feel like we're living in a place that we didn't really end up mm -hmm. living in that we had, we had hoped we would. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people are hungry for change. It's, uh, I found out that a lot of the things I cared about were really city, city issues and local issues. Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, one of them in particular would be the the police department okay. and uh, the housing uh, situation. Those two are very local centric issues, and they're they they can be dealt with at a local level much better than trying to change it at the state level. So, for instance, uh, I in North Minneapolis and a lot of the constituents and and other residents in North Minneapolis have found that. Crime is a big problem, and when we're the victims of crime in North Minneapolis, we found that our interactions with the police department is not what we would hope it to be. Uh, the police usually just come out and write you this little blue mm -hmm. card and say, give it to your insurance company, and, and that's it. And they don't really do anything for you. They're not interested in investigating mm -hmm. hidden runs, uh, property crimes. They're not interested in taking fingerprints or collecting evidence. They're, they're not there to follow up on crimes. What they do is they drive around in their car, they give people tickets for speeding and not wearing their seatbelt, and mm -hmm. don't follow up on property mm -hmm. crimes or any other kinds of crimes. So mm -hmm. trying to change that trajectory, I think, is one of the things that people really care about in the neighborhood. And then, of course, in North Minneapolis, one of the hugest issues was this like foreclosure crisis. Yeah. And so if you start looking at, well, why was there a foreclosure crisis? Well, it's because we had these really fast run-ups in housing prices. And that's not, not something you can change at the city level, but the city benefited from it, right? Because if property taxes go up and property values mm -hmm. go up, then you're going to collect a lot more revenues. Well, instead of the city looking at it and say, well, with all this windfall of cash, we should be kind of planning for the future. But what they planned was that housing values would just keep going up. And so now we sit here in 2009, we have this huge budget shortfall. And now our city council wants to blame it on local government aid cuts and all these different things. Mm -hmm. But what it really has to do with is that we had unsustainable growth in the home prices and now people are losing their homes. And 
one of the major contributors to that is that they have to pay a lot more per month, and property taxes are a huge component of that. Over the last seven years, we've seen our property taxes double. Not a percentage double, but actual dollars spent double. I came into North Minneapolis, was paying a certain dollar amount, I think it was like $800 a year, now it's $1,600 a year. Uh, for your average family to have to pay an additional seventy to hundred dollars per month, that's that's a lot of money. That's groceries. Let's break these two issues up: um, the police and the housing crisis. And we'll get back to the housing crisis in a few minutes. Uh, specific to the police, this might be a dumb question, but how um, how does your position on the city council affect what might be done? Um, you know, as far as how the MPD, the the, the police force operates you know what, what what sort of decisions are you able to make as a council person for how the how the police does a better job or influencing them to do a better job well it's I think it, in a lot of ways a city council or board of directors for a, a company operate in a similar fashion okay it's it's the board of the city council's job to set policy and to hire management so it isn't like the city council directly comes to the police you know officers mm -hmm. and says do your job this way what their job is is to hire the chief of police and yeah. to manage the top po people in the police department and say, here's how we want our city to be run, here's what we want you to do as your highest priorities, and here's, here's kind of the, the motive that we want. And it's also uh, a check and a balance on the police department because the city council's job is to kind of you know, watch over the city and make sure yeah. things are being done well. Uh, I think what we have in the police department right now is that we have a lot of police officers who have been indicted on charges and have been mm -hmm. uh, running up all kinds of bills due to lawsuits. Um, we have the, the Metro Gang Task Force mm -hmm. that got disbanded. Mm -hmm. We have all these kinds of things. And when we look at that and we say, well, whose responsibility is it? I'd say, well, it's the police officers' responsibilities who are engaging in these criminal activities. And then it's also Chief Dolan's responsibility because this is his team. Mm -hmm. These are the people he's supposed to be managing. And it's the job of the city council to put checks and balances on this. So I think at this point, it's time to come in there, start cleaning some house, and, and really effective change that way. So I think we need to change management. That number one, we have to get a new city council in there who cares mm -hmm. about these issues. Uh, I think the city council right now has proven that it doesn't care about these issues. Uh, I would say that the sitting uh, City Council President Barb Johnson doesn't care about these issues. She isn't interested in cleaning up these problems, especially when she's presented with evidence uh, in recent lawsuits that have been filed where they've brought a lot of these issues to light and she's ignored them or tried to sweep them under the rug. I think because it will reflect badly on the City Council because they haven't been doing their jobs. The focus of the police department is kind of uh, revenue collection. Yeah. Is there any revenue collection and returning someone's property? There's, there's nothing there. If you write a ticket, you get a certain percentage of it. So it's in the police department's best interest to write a bunch of tickets and things because they get revenue sharing from that. But mm. you know they don't get any extra bonus for returning your property. So I think that's that's part of the big problem is that th there's no emphasis there. Hmm. Yeah, and this is just sort of a um I don't know, sort of the entity of the city, I'm learning more and more, seems to operate 